The communications ministry has called for an investigation into allegations of corruption in a deal involving MultiChoice and ANN7. There's also been called to publicly release the full contracts entered into between these two companies. This at a time when the country is yet to complete the migration from analog to digital terrestrial television. I'm sure you know it more commonly as DTT. For an update on this and other issues, we are joined by our communications minister, Mamaloko Kubayung Gubane. It's good to have you, minister. Thank you very, very much for joining us on the program. Thank you very much for inviting me, Lian. I right. really appreciate this, and morning to your viewers. Thank you. Um, minister, the set-top boxes, let's, let's begin there. They, they've opened up really a can of worms, whether to encrypt or not to encrypt. Can you tell us what the implications of both instances are, so that we can, you know, as, as normal citizens understand it? Yeah, it has been a quite long, um, protracted battle between various parties. Um, around encryption and unencryption. In simple terms, it's, it's around protection of the, the contents um, that is working in that. When you have, for example, I, I don't think for citizens, this is what we should be worried about. I must be honest with you, Lian. This is more about the people who are broadcasters that are likely to benefit and the people who are providers, almost like the people who are providing the content where you are able to encrypt and saying, if I encrypt this message, you are not able to go and utilize it some way. It's not for platforms as free to air. It's almost um, for commercial platforms mainly. Um, so for, for me, where I'm sitting, this is one debate. I don't think that it's, it's something that as government we should be worried about and getting entangled in. And especially because it's, a, it's about a technology. It's not even about policy. Mm. It's a technology issue. You can decide to use a particular technology that has encryption and use a technology that does not have. And in this day and age, in 2017, when technology has moved so far, Globally, they'll really look at us and think that there's something wrong with us if we are still entangled in some debates like that. Okay. All right. So those are those are the the, the set top boxes. Let's let's quickly move on to. There's so much to get through. We we're just so happy to have you with yeah. us. Especially, I think it's our first time talking to you in your portfolio yes. in your new portfolio, Minister. The the migration from analog to digital. You know, the, the goal is to complete this by the end of next year, by December 2018. I mean, it seems that the goalposts are com constantly moving. Do you think this is going to happen? Is it achievable? Yeah, definitely. You know, one has to take back. We, we must take responsibility as government, Lian. This project started 2006. When I got appointed into the portfolio, one of the things I said when I met the entire project team, uh, which included the delivering um, entities. I told them, unfortunately for me, having been a chair of telecommunications and postal services, I've listened to these presentations from 2014 and 2017. And I did not want to be listening to presentations that still spoke the same thing. Now, what we agreed with the team is that we are going to change the delivery model to try and make sure that we are able to deliver faster and effectively. One of the areas we've done an analysis was around the slow uptake where citizens are registering to benefit. Now, that's one of the problems. We are not seeing a lot of people coming out despite communications department doing outreach program. So one of the things I had said to them, it's either it's the method that we are communicating, one, the message that we are carrying, two, or the product that we are carrying. Mm. So we have to do an analysis that what is it out of these three that is making the uptake low. Mm. But secondly was to say to the team, who are the role players, who are the partners that can assist us in rolling out this program? For example, you'd note that the mobile network operators have an interest in us migrating because they stand to benefit in the spectrum allocation. So we've asked them to come to the party to help us roll out the digital migration project yeah. successfully and finally meet the target. I'm sitting here, Lian, with the rework that we have done so far. We are almost at the end of the tail because we are engaging everybody in the sector, including manufacturers. I've had meetings with the manufacturers as well to see their capacity. 
My last stop will be with the Treasury to look at the allocated resources. If we can be given, with the model that we are bringing, if we can be given the enough resources, we'll be able to deliver the project and migrate within a year. Yeah. Well, we, we can only hope so, because, I mean, this project started more than a decade ago. I mean, there's been so much promotion, so much advertising uh, behind all of it. Yeah. And then uh, moving that aside, there's been delays and delays, which you yourself have mentioned. And I'd like to find out from your opinion why you think it's gone so wrong. And also the set top boxes. I mean, there has been distribution of certain set top boxes. Are those going to have to be replaced with new ones or can they still be used? You know, there's a, there's a lot of confusion out there. Now, in terms of the project, Lian, it was in phases. Phase one was the SK area, which is done. Um, we estimated 23,000 households being migrated um, and we have got 27 already done. So that part is done. The second phase of the project was to move into the borderline, which has been moving very slow. We have, um, through USASA, secured almost 650,000 set-top boxes to help us with the borderline. What I've said is that the only challenge we have, Leanne, is that the project started in 2006. The discussion and the technology that was going to be used was on the basis of that year. So we've continued over years working on the basis of that discussion and the technology then. We are in 2017, and my issues are as follows. One, I have a 2019 deadline that I must meet uh, in terms of digital migration. But again, there's a 2023 deadline of satellite that we must meet as, as the country. Mm. So one of the things in 2017 I'm saying, can we review because we are implementing the final phase of it in 2018. Are we able to assist government to also meet the deadline for 2023 so that we don't go back to Treasury and ask for more money? In our environment, we need to understand that our fiscal constraints will not allow Treasury to constantly issue money for us to do this project. So we must be able to take the initiative as the department, be proactive, and help ourselves in meeting two deadlines that we have. Okay. So that's okay. one of the things that we are looking at, the technology to help us. All and right. we think that once we do that, that technology should be um, palatable to society. It will generate more interest and make more people interested in being part of the migration project. Okay. Um, Minister, in terms of, I, I think, a very big issue we need to address here as well is, is the issue of multi-choice and ANN7. You yourself have said now that you want to initiate an investigation into it. We've seen the opposition party, the Democratic Alliance, demanding that those contracts between the two parties be made public. They're able to see them. How far are you with um, uh, moving forward with this investigation? No, um, I think I need to correct it. I didn't say that I will do investigation, Lian. My view, because I've met, I've called ANN7 to ask questions. They've clarified what I, I wanted to know. I've called uh, multi-choice. They've clarified their issue. What I understand the matter to be, one, as initiated, because I, put, I picked up that outer wanted multi-choice to remove uh, ANN7 from the platform. Yeah. And when I engage, I picked up that the matter is a contractual issue. So from a department point of view, we can't get involved in contractual issues. Where two parties have issues, uh, they need to sort it out themselves. That's the first thing. The second issue is around what Outer has been calling for, which I think is wrong. We can't have lobby groups calling for a shutdown of media platforms. Today it might be NN7, tomorrow who's next, when a lobby group can go out and call for a platform to be closed. This, for me, it's, it's violating what we have envisaged and what our constitution prescribes. One, as independent editorial policy. So we must allow ANN7 to have their independence in terms of their content mm. on their platform. When we don't like it, let's switch off based on our remote. We've got remote control. We just switch off. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we should not allow where lobby groups can go around and saying that we're closing down station because that will be against freedom of expression. So that's the issue. And I've said relating to corruption issues, we as government are very clear where we stand. We do not want to see corrupt activities in our government. And I said as the Department of Communication, yeah, we yeah. are not a 
a, a department that has the authority, not the capability to do any investigation if there are allegations of corruption. Mm -hmm. There are relevant departments such as Department of Police and Department of Justice that can come Need to in get involved in that. when needed on Ma those matters. Minister, just, just finally and please very, very quickly, but there are allegations, however, that um, multi-choice may have benefited through transactions involving your, 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 your uh, predecessor, and that, of course, being uh, Faith Mutambi, the Minister of Communications is cancellation of the rollout of a competitive encryption service for all plat TV platforms. Surely that warrants an investigation. Lynn, when I got into the department, I did. I, I had a briefing, as I'm saying, with the team to understand where the project is, and obviously okay. because I've participated in the sector previously, um, in my capacity as the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Telecommunications and Postal Services. Um, Look, we looked at the matter, and where I, my comfort comes from is the fact that the matter went as far as court, a constitutional court. Remember, it started in, in the high court, and then it ended with the constitutional court, which the constitutional court made a ruling in favor of what Minister Mutambi was saying. What multi-choice has come out to say is that they have engaged with the department which we all engage as ministers with various stakeholders and their issue is that they've they've sent documents to the department the department indeed acknowledged that there was documents that were sent by by multi-choice that were processed by the department as part of inputs in the work that the department is doing now that for me um Lian, is not something that i can be worried about i've looked at the documents i've seen the inputs it's nothing untowards what i'm saying in terms of investigation if there's anything that the public feels that the minister in their capacity as minister at that time has done something personally. I have no authority, Lian, to investigate another minister. All right. Let's leave it there. Thank you for your feedback, Minister. And uh, I have no doubt we'll be uh, touching base with you again soon. We need to wrap it there. The Minister of Communications, Mamaloko Kubai Ngubane, talking to us from our parliamentary studios. Uh, we